guys, when Biddlin does a good job, we thumbs him up. When he does a, jo a bad job, we call him Badalin. But it's Biddlin today, baby. EGC Lippany for 2v2s. And actually, this isn't too bad on the spawning system. I like this. This looks quite nice. We are checking out on some custom games that were happening between Baltoon, Crackity, Lash, and Avali. So four familiar faces from the pro scene. This is what I want, dude. This is what I need in team games. It hurts me so much that we don't even get remotely close to this. We often just get Baltoon and Crackity versus little Johnny and little Timmy who have played 10 games in total. Sadly, the matchmaking is just not there, which is why I love these guys took the power into their own hands and just hopped into some private games. So let's talk about these comps because it's pretty interesting. On one side, you've got a Bassett's French, <laughs> which is quite comical because we just watched a Himayama game where the other side done this combo and they just chose to boom with one player and attack with the other. So we're probably going to see similar here where Lash attacks and then Avali's role is just to eco boom up with a, an eco wing. And typically you go for free TCs. Pretty doable on a map like Lippany as well because of all the berry spawns and the deer around you. On the other side, we have something quite spicy, though. And I'm wondering if they're going to do it. There's a possibility that Baltoon could walk over and build Madrissa in Crackley's base. And then you build Grand Winery next to it. I'm wondering if we get it here. It's unlikely because the issue of a Baltoon is he's left pretty food light. I'd love to see it, though. The idea is that you could just give your opponent um, the sheep. Oh, sorry, you give your teammate the sheep, and in return, he gives you the Madrissa. Because you will be able to drop off at your own building, the round winery, you will buff up the gathering rate. And remember, the Madrissa like respawns the berries, right? And I'm curious, like, I need to double check whether the allies can gather it. Has anyone, has anyone tested that? Because I remember that this was being tested a different way, which is that I believe if you dropped a mill next to the Madrissa berries, it increased the amount they had on them. But I think when they respawned, it went back to normal. And where did the name Killer Pigeon come from? We should do like a quick origin clip on that, shouldn't I? I used to play 1v1s in Call of Duty a lot. And when I got a bad matchup, because in those days we didn't have uh, ELO systems, we not reliable ones anyway, to make it fairer, I'd handicap myself by making bird noises whenever I got close to my opponent. And oh my god, they're doing it! They're doing it! Let's go! <laughs> oh, this is sick. This is the type of behavior, though, that I love in the, the idea of like, team games, right? Like, you can't get this in 1v1s. People just think team games play out the same old on a bigger scale. I think the only reason that people have that feeling is because sadly the maps are too large. Especially if you're on 2v2s. They need to shrink the amount of players, uh, the size of the maps that they put loads of players on. And then I think you'll start to see that this development, because like one big flaw I think in development choices being made at AOE4 is it's all focused around 1v1s. Team games never really get any real foresight. The cool thing though is a nice kind of side product of adding all these new sieves is that inherently you'll just get this leak over effect of new comps appearing, right? New strategies. Because all these different sieves interacting in different ways will rub off against each other. And this is one of them. Dude, this is cool. <laughs> and then there's the normies to the north side. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. You went knights. Oh, wow. You're going to build TCs. How innovative of you two. What year is it? Oh, I love this. Now, Baltine does have issues with giving over the Madrissa because now his eco kind of sucks. It's the only upside you have. So I'm wondering if the plan is like 2TC for him at all. Otto is a sacrificial. It doesn't have to be in its entirety. You could just like trade this off as I will now make 2TC and Crackity, you will get loads of mercenaries so you must play aggro. It's a little bit difficult because you're going to be up against you know, the Knights, but that's the beauty of Limitane plus jabs here. All right, let's find out if it works. Can he gather? Can he, can, please? Are you just going to leave it until it's like stockpiled up, I guess? I'm assuming you can gather here. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I love this. More of this, please. I still remember playing Dawn of War as a kid a lot. And one of my favorite things was how when you played team games, there were interesting little overlaps. They almost felt like Easter eggs. So like, for anyone who knows Dawn of War, they'll know what I'm talking about. There was one with... Um, the Dark Elder. Dark Elder's builders passively built things. You touched it, and then it would build by itself. So you could do, you, like, there was a time when you could do that with teammate structures. So, like, for example, there was Necrons, and Necrons were infamous for being the slowest building faction in the game. So when you had a teammate, Dark Elder and Necron, the, the Dark Elder guy would send one of his workers over and just touch your buildings to automate them for you. 
so you could do other things and focus your resources elsewhere. I love those kind of like quirky little elements. I think it really adds a, a depth of flavor to these games. Ottomans and Byzantines work together. I know, right? <laughs> this is alternate history month. If they just worked together, they both could have ruled the universe. So other side of this, second TC's already came in. I feel like you should be on free here, though. I'm a little bit surprised you stopped it too, but maybe they scout this play and they're a little bit worried about it. In the meantime, it's just going to be night spam coming out from Lash. This is a pretty good position to find yourself in as a southern team. I feel like their comp works quite well if this is a cavalry-focused investment on the north side. Because all you have to do, spam Limitane, spam Spears, and then add in the jabs with all the olive oil you're getting for free. Wait. <laughs> I remember we said this, that he would take the sheep instead. That's exactly what's happening. This is sick. I love this. So Crackety should have the first Mercs already in the way. I'm wondering, is there any value over here? Ooh, that's tempting. Can, so here's the thing. Usually rule knights off of the neutral trade post. Just It feels like you can't scale enough. But hear me out. This is a game where you have infinite grand winery, Oliver. I mean, if there was a game to try for some knights, this would be the one. It would completely screw with green as well. Because Lash right now is the one feeling like he has dominance in that department. That's going to come in. Sisten is just about still working for efficiency here. And that means you can always try to activate the Akratoi. By the way, in this matchup... French versus Byzantines, Akratoi is insanely powerful. The plus two armor completely relegates the ability to get two hit. Because remember, the way knights work for the French, they charge in, Lance does a huge amount of damage at 29, and then they get their damage buffed by, I think it was 20, up to 23 from 19. So that two hits a villager. If you have Akratoi, the extra armor means you don't die. Two TC, Avali. The problem I'm seeing in this game right now is the archers just aren't on the move. He's just staying at home. So he's relying on Lash to do all the work. Avali does have some scalability, but I'm curious, like Crackety's win condition, what is it in his eyes here? Is it just massing javelins and going? I could see that working pretty well. Javs are a top tier unit in the early phases of the game. And Limitane are one of the best spearmen you can get. So it's a pretty healthy one-two comp. this, I'm wondering, does Avali just start saving up, perhaps? You got a small group of archers, but realistically, there's so many javelins already. I don't know what your purpose is. If you keep your opponents boxed in, like you've seen Gully now, the whole idea is one of you needs to go castle. Like, if I'm the Northern team, I'm looking at this game going, okay, we have map control, we've constricted them. They can try to rush castle, but they're not going to have much to work with when they get there. Now, that kind of bait you into thinking that you should be going all in, but at the end of the day, you're still scaling archers and trying to push into javelins. It's dangerous. <laughs> And what is up, Witzcat? Thank you for the resub, buddy. Petition to, Petition add, to add very, very tiny, tiny pigeons, pigeons sitting, sitting on landmark, landmark buildings. buildings. So that, that goes back to microtransactions, and everyone seems to be against it. But I'm just saying, if I could have pigeons on this statue right now, if I could really, like, you know, England, if you could have, like, just a, a little Nelson's column covered in bird crap, why that? Maybe a Nelson's column with a giant pigeon on top. Military school coming in. No second TC play out of Lash, though. He just committed to one, right? And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Because he just needs to keep pumping knights nonstop. He's up to 11. Should have chivalry already, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's now being queued up. And now we see the move. Crackety needs to do some damage. Now, this is interesting, actually, because we've seen Byzantines versus Abbasids. Very powerful matchup for the Byzantines. Because really, Abbasids want to lean to infantry, but all of their infantry choices are kind of worse. Archers get countered by jabs. Limitane are so tanky in comparison that the reality is that your spearmen, even with boot camp, would kind of even up. We have to remember this is a game where boot camp wasn't taken. And I'm wondering if that was worth it for Avali for the eco wing benefit if he stopped a 2 TC. Life comes in. Uh oh. Flash finds a good strike. Might lose one or two knights for it, but decent damage being done. I think Crackety wasn't prepped for that. He thought he was going to draw all attention with his main army. Because they're getting ready to die. Baltin and Crackety sitting on the borders. Check this. Avli doesn't know. So if you time this right, this rush in, this flood in, could do a lot of damage. Spy's going to lead the way. Archers do move in range. Avli. A little bit slow to react. So free villagers going down. Kyra Siphon has now been built. And remember, the secondary TC is on the east side here. So you can actually dent this area, deny gold access, and actually keep Avli locked into this age indefinitely. 
which is important considering what he's doing. Oh man, they caught him at the perfect time. Night Dive is going to get mostly cleared up. Spearmen are now on the way, so that's going to force him away. So Baltoon is going to reinforce this area because he understands that Crackley's army is better and needs to be leveraged for attack. Karasaf now moving in. Only one so far. This is a scary point in the game, actually. Karasaf is going to talk through this pretty damn quickly. I say that. What, what was that? Wait, is that a bug? I thought they fixed this around the fire armor. What? Uh. 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 <laughs> that has to be a bug, right? Wait, wait, wait. So when we cast Avali in that 1v1 in the tournament the other day, if he just linked in like we said for the Golden Age, he wouldn't have died. Oh my god. <laughs> I would, so this is the thing. Like, we literally cast a 1v1 where the Byzantines crotched on Avali on the Abbasids. But it's because his second TC was loose to the, the House of Wisdom. And I remember questioning that game. I was like, maybe the fire armor doesn't matter? Apparently it does. <laughs> Oh my god, you know what makes it worse though is he's actually still losing the TC. This is taking a million years, but it's working. Oh, he's getting finned a bit though. Limitane, do brace for it. Knight's just trying to push this back. Archer Mass is building. Baltoon just needs to keep that meta alive. Kyra Siphon's not going to be charging in the Gorn. TC still up. And barely any spears left over. I think they're going to hold. The TC did too much damage to our troops in the meantime. Yeah, you don't say. Like, there's so many questionable bugs there. I was like, for a second, I was like, is Balthion getting burnt as well? <laughs> oh, that is brutal. Crackity lost the backbone of his army. But you know what, guys? This balances it out because remember, he's got infinite olive oil. He can replace it. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely fantastic. I'm glad I got that question answered ahead of it happening in a proper game because I have been curious on that one for a bit. I thought they fixed it with the most recent patch when they fixed walls with a fire armor issue, right? Guess not. <laughs> he doesn't have any villagers left? Dog, he has 58. What, 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 like, what are you smoking? <laughs> They're all up here. Avalee's fine. Last just dove your TC. Oh, yeah, apologies. We may have been distracted a little. So, Crackley's down to 39. Baltoon, 43. So, some damage done there. We were distracted for good reasons here. In fact, yellow's still looming around. Check this. Slash goes in again. Avali's here to assist this time, so that's more idle time. In the meantime, Avali on his way now towards Castle Edge. Limitane. This is perfect. The Knights wouldn't be able to stay here and idle this for long, but the Archers mean the Limitane can't do anything. And this has a compounding effect. Crackity doesn't have any jabs other than his first group coming, right? Because he can't access enough olive oil. This is a pretty cool one two little strike at the backside. Nice denial on the west as well. Crackity is actually struggling to get it together, so it's on Balatoon to make something happen. Big ass army coming in. 52 Archers. It's time for a dive. Lash. 19 villagers in the front line. He needs to get the hell out of Dodge. In fact, You'd think it might have been safer to go in the outpost. So instead, he has to run like a headless chicken back to... Wait, wait. Is it me or do they look like they don't have wheelbarrow? That's... Oh my god, he doesn't have wheelbarrow! Grandpa build speed here. Because we are 15 minutes in the game and he's only now getting wheelbarrow. Lash all of a sudden chipped down to 42 eco. Crackney may have been bad and bruised, but still now ahead on 43. It's crazy to think that despite what they've done in that second TC, they're still in a pretty good position in this game, right? Like, it's kind of crazy. 
Valsun has a very threatening army. I think even Lash's count, yeah, 21 knights, it's decent. It just doesn't feel overwhelming. That's why he's focusing on raiding instead. And the time will chase his way. Archers and jabs in the meantime should be able to annihilate the last of the archers. So at that point, Crackley should be unshackled, but problems are emerging. Avali is now up in Castle Age. It is indeed the military wing, which means boot camp and composite bow should be on the way. So this is the point where actually Valtin and Crackley just need to get out of, of Feudal. You can't stay in Feudal anymore. Against military wing ABBA on 2TC this entire time, it's death sentence. You need the better jabs. You need the scalability of passive production for the Ottomans. And you can see that's why they're just backing up entirely. How much the eco difference between Valtin and Avali? Uh, Avali should be a mile ahead. Yeah, mostly focus on wood, which tells you there should be a farm transition coming soon. Plus, he's been scaling archers, right? But if you look at the count, Palatine's at 50, Avali's at 68. And remember, he went Eco Wing, he's got Golden Age. So many layers to this, right? Knights down the way as well. Arch is front lining for this. Composite Bows is not in yet, so Avali jumped the gun taking that fight. Really needs to wait for that tech to come through. That's what's going to allow him to just strominate the Ottomans here. Then again, he is an age up. This is why he's feeling overconfident about his timing. Dive is going to come in. Valtzun, he's on his way up with the tech up, but it's not in yet. This is a perfect time to punish Blue. Who's winning at this moment? Yellow and green, 100%. And this is scary as well. Like, you can't rush out Siege as the Ottomans. It just doesn't work that way. So Manganel is being built in your face. is dangerous. The only player can potentially save you quick enough is Crackety. But, I mean, Crackety, dude, he's hard stuck Castle. A feudal, rather. He wishes he was Castle. You know, technically, you could be deceived into believing he's in Castle Age because he's got three landmarks in his base. One of them, though, does not belong to him. That's nice. Get ready for the dive. A little bit of hesitation here. I don't like that. I think Lash just needs to kind of press this a bit harder, but you see why the Janissary pool coming in clutch to just add that fear factor. That's a cool detail. That actually might save Baltoon from this. The Matane are lurking on the backside. <laughs> Crack and he's like, uh, you got this, bro. Baltoon's like, please help, dude. Just get your ass in here right now. Nah, nah, dog, you got this. Keep hanging in there, kitty. Archer dive coming through. Mango a bit too far away, though. And the backstab's on the way. Javelin, Spearman moving in. It's going to bait green back. They may have overextended. It's the perfect sandwich. A slice of bacon, some cheese, and a big old slab of ham. All they now need to do is take those two pieces of bread and squish it together. Upgrades have came through. Baltoon has the Giga Archers now. Veteran up Archers ready to go. And that's a dive into the base of Crackety instead. I'm just hesitant to say it's going to hit enough damage here. The problem right now is, like, if you look at the players, the weak one is indeed Crackety. He's got a feudal army. That's why the composite bows want to fight. Javelins have to stand their ground. Choke points will be held for the time being by Limitane. Lash has to commit to this fight. Realistically, he needs to go after economy because the enemy army is catching up quick. Baltoon now in for the cleanup. And there's no way they're going to be able to hold on here. 30 archers left over underneath the TC, but not for long. Good save by Baltin. Good recovery. And now here's the one with the most kingly of armies. I don't think anyone's coming close to that. 91 military. Avalon is down to 43. We don't talk about Crackety. Crackety's the groupie right now. We thought he was the main star. He was given the mic. And then that, that Kara Siphon rush was the equivalent of like getting the mic, being on stage, it being your moment of like, I got a dream. And getting booed off stage. So now it's on Baljad to save the day. The Swede to give him a taste of those meatballs. Crackety does need to catch up. Looks like he's going to start prioritizing the food. Gold has already been stockpiled up the wazoo. Other side of this, Avali. I don't think he's been playing for relics at all, which kind of worries me. That's a very big power spike player you could be leaning into. But it looks like neither of them have that on the agenda, right? I don't think Lash went for it either. I feel like Lash would be the obvious one considering he hasn't got TC play. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Baltoon leans into it now. His army is still huge. 
it's very easy for Ottomans to kind of step into that next. They also won a lot of gold, but they want to scale Janissaries. Speaking of which, we are having more Janissaries added in. The plan was to let the Byzantines boom infinite mercenaries. Yes, the plan has changed. Long live Baltoon. <laughs> Why spam infinite mercs? Like, okay, so here's a crazy thought. Ottomans are OP because not only do they have infinite units themselves, but they can allow the Byzantines to spam infinite units. We figured it out. Trash in 1v1s, god tier in team games. Tickle. Not going to work out well here. They have to be very careful about their positioning. One misstep, and Baltoon's going to be in their base. This army is so scary. It's crazy, right? Like, he's over 100 military. He's still got wiggle room to go further. Crackety. Now on his way up. The Falc structure being built. Golden Horn Tower. Pretty good spike point for him to try and recover into Mass Javelins now. Crackety playing Robin to Baltoon's Batman. You know, the funny thing is, like, score-wise, Avalie is barely behind Baltoon, but I shake my head and disagree. Most of that is, is just in eco. It's kind of a, a fake element of the stage. Sure, over time, it'll pay off, but you can see they're running out of space. The push is coming in. It's going to be a bloody scary one. Where is Otto Siege? Probably a million miles away. Do you know how long it takes for these things to get across the map? That's why Abba feels so good. Just build it wherever you want. Save the distance. Jani can't get sniped down here. Mangal going to be a complete whiff. So it looks like it's just going to be a back away. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense, right? Crackley just teched up. That was the correct read coming out from green and yellow. Lash and Abba are like, okay. Well, if he just teched up, he's not assisting you. He can't be. What worries me is like, let's look at the, the current resources. Whoa. Avalie's just going to go Imperial. What's your win condition here? I guess you could trade. Trade's pretty good on this map. Like, look at the spawn. Trade post right next to his base. Look at the safety of this corner. You've got cliff sides. You've got walls up. This is a really good trade game, actually, for Avalie and Lash. And I don't think... I don't feel like Baltoon's in a position to stop it now, right? Like the hesitation, you can see Crackety is not really contributing much. He's up to 41 military again. But it's going to take him, what, an extra two minutes to be ready to go? Or at least definitely to be in their base. So he says, hell, pull the trigger. Culture wing on the way. All right, what do you think, guys? Ones, if green and yellow are winning. Twos, if you think blue and teal have got this. Because this looks incredibly... Good for Lash and Avli. Feels like the type of position that would be impossible to kind of lose from, right? Like the, the mountain knights you've got here. Remember, this is Royal Institute, by the way. So we've got Cantled Saddles, we've got Royal Bloodlines. Like this is basically an Imperial Age army. And then if you think about the effectivity of the archers from the Abbasids, it's almost like having a Castle Age Plus there as well, with health and attack speed. So in a lot of ways, they've comboed at this beautiful mixture of an, a light Imperial effect. Baltoon, now on his way, slowly back to defend. He's going to dive towards the farms. Really, the, the only downside I see right now is these knights may struggle in these choke points. That could be their undoing. The mangoes are also on the way, and notice that that is something that Avli has lacked in producing. I don't like this. He's floating almost 2k wood, 2k gold. Build some mangoes, build some sprinkles. I think that's the thing that's genuinely missing here. It's the thing that could cost them a fight. Especially the mangoes, the double mango on the back of this from the Ottomans. Dives coming in. Tech up, about to complete. Needs to be quick in the veterancy though. Into the elite stats rather for those archers. Limitana line's gonna spread and push this back. Trying to force the knights to commit in. Mango's gonna go for a wallop. It's a big one. But the double mango's coming in range now. Tech up complete, so that's confirmation. They need to fight and they need to win this right now because avali has been holding back. One Mango just not doing enough here. Knights have to pull back. Lash hesitant to lose his army. Means that Avalie's going to throw away his. Oh my god, this Ottoman ball is so big. Jab count up to 22 as well. I mean, that's a complete wipe of the army. Avalie just needs to get the hell out of dodge. 
The problem is he can't. He's too slow. He's going to be left on the cliffside and fall. This is spotted out of the game. It's going to be a reboom for nothing. And at least that as an archer is going to feel worthless at the stage. Now, Lash does at least get away, but I, I'm a little bit skeptical about the way this was executed. I know it's hard to dive into Limitane like that, but you've got to be the, the game breaker. He saw the Janissary count, though, or at least heard them. The reality is there was only eight in the mixer. And Limitane count was getting low, right? Lash, if he wants to excuse his action here, he needs to raid, raid, raid. The problem right now is there's just so much to kill. Baltoon now going for a free TC boom. Behind this, other side, Crackley will course set up his second TC. He's condensed safe near the army. I think the issue for Lash is if this was your goal, this was what you had in mind, you needed to go sooner. Like, you know, Crap will get off the pot. I don't even know why you're there holding Avali's hand. Just tell him, okay, this has been fun, but I'm abandoning you. So that Avali can have that moment. Uh-huh. Wait, what? Instead, this looked like a top 10 anime betrayal. <laughs> Very pretentious French, no uh, French nobility being like, oh, no, 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 I can't get my boots muddy. I'll see you later, peasants. Hey, come back. Now, Avali at least can reboom, but now think about the Bream Room we've got here. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a tech up on the way soon for one of these two players. Let's have a look. Baltoon mm, must be close to pop, right? 164. He needs to get up there with the passive production. Crackity is a mile off. So Crackity is, if we're being totally real about this, still the weak point. But most of the raids have been shut down now, right? I think the only thing that's missing, oh, well, funnily enough, Adley's doing it, Stone Wars. I'm trying to think how they can lose this from their position. I mean, if Lash and Avali go to fight again, and Avali decides to, do, like, Lash decides to abandon him, that could work. Uh, Baltoon, I knew about the Kyra Siphon thing from the previous patch, but I thought they fixed it. So I was shocked. Because, like, I, I remember talking about this firearm issue before, because it used to be on walls. But I figured when they fixed it on walls, it worked for everything. So, yeah, that caught me completely off guard. <laughs> yeah, guys, don't worry. Crackity's going for that participation ribbon. Crackity got told he was Peach in this situation and that, that Baltoon was Mario. Crackity made the mistake of assuming this was the Mario movie. This is, this is the old school Super Mario right now. I guess in that metaphor, does that make Avali Donkey Kong? Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, Avali. Camel's coming out, though. Oh, man, that's a heavy hit to the damage increase. These knights aren't going to be able to carry this fight. Avali, once again, is going to get bailed on. Flash has to commit, and he knows that there's no going back from this. If Avali gets wiped again, an army this big, the way that Baltin's blobbing, Imperial will just be a matter of time. But he does it. He actually leaves him again. Oh, we have been here before, and I feel like we're going to be here again and again and again. This comm just isn't working. I feel like Avali just needs hand cannoneers. Like, please stop building arches. They're killing you at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry. <what? laughs> this is Crackity's contribution. He stopped the walls. Like, we couldn't have done it without you, Crackity. <laughs> What a push out now, though. Scary point in the game. Baltin's army feels unkillable. 13 Janissaries, 32 Archers, 4 Manganels. I mean, the crazy part is, like, you need a Culverin, right? Just get a Culverin, some Ghulam, some Hand Cannoneers, and go. Have like 129 Eco. That should be more than doable. <laughs> Baltin's like, wait, what? Whoa, 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 wait, wait. We want to fight. Why are we leaving? We, If we stay here... They'll come to us again, and then we can kill them again. And then, exactly what we do is we keep doing it until they get tilted and leave the game. Oh, we figured out the masterful strategy here. Lash is trying to catch up. 96 eco, 40 military. Dive into the farms, though. Oh, my God. Baltoon, run. Run like the wind, son. 
I mean, they haven't started tech ups, right? Wow, he insta calls it. The farms get shut down, and the Swede can find no sweet redemption here.